Okay, could I ask members and those leaving the public gallery to do so as quickly and as quietly as possible as we move on to the next item of business, which is a members' business debate on motion 7832 in the name of Alex Cole Hamilton on Chinese state surveillance. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put, uh, but I'd invite members wishing to participate to press the request to be speak buttons now or as soon as possible and invite uh, Alex Cole Hamilton to open the debate around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'm pleased to rise from my party to speak in this members' debate in my name. Uh, the People's Republic of China is a huge player on the world stage. It is the second largest economy in the world, while its Belt and Road Initiative has funded massive infrastructure po uh, projects in over 150 countries around the globe. China has projected its influence in an unprecedented fashion. Its huge economic clout means that we too are heavily reliant on China as a trading partner and a supplier of the tech that we increasingly rely on to help run our lives. However, there are serious question marks about the kind of influence that China may seek to exert over many countries who rely on it in the coming years and months. And recent events suggest its intentions may not be entirely benign. A fortnight ago, a Chinese spy balloon fitted with an array of cameras and solar panels was shot down over America. Uh, the incident took social media by storm but it should give us all pause and should be treated with the utmost seriousness. It was just one of several surveillance balloons which the US officials say have been spotted over no less than five continents. These, this represents quite an alarming development by a Chinese state whose rhetoric, particularly in relation to Taiwan, has been, become increasingly concerning. But there is a reason to be concerned about matters much closer to home. Presiding officer, Deputy Presiding Officer, it is a point of fact that Chinese national intelligence law requires every Chinese base company to cooperate with state intelligence services. That's a fact. This raises huge questions then about potential intrusion and misuse of the data that Chinese companies collect through domestic technology that we readily deploy. Many companies operating in the United Kingdom, some of them household names, fall into this category. And in recent weeks, I would take an intervention from Martin Whitfield. Martin Whitfield. Uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to the member for giving way. And with that um, disparity of data protection, that also includes things that we indeed fit on our mobile phones and indeed on our computers, and that there are very serious questions to be asked about how that data is handled and, as the member says, who has access to it. Alex Cole Hamilton. I'm very grateful to the member for paving way to the point I'm just about to make. And in re because in recent weeks, the chair of the House of Commons Foreign Affairs Select Committee advised UK citizens to delete the app TikTok from their phones, given the weight of evidence showing that the Chinese Communist Party could and has used it to harvest private information. There is even evidence to suggest that people working for TikTok in China have hacked into European data to track down journalists' sources. That is deeply worrying. This should perhaps prompt us all to consider whether the continued use of TikTok is prudent. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Hike Vision is a Chinese state-owned manufacturer which supplies video surveillance equipment for both civilian and military purposes. Last year, Liberal Democrat research revealed that at least 11 local authorities across Scotland are currently using Hike Vision cameras, which are also used in the detention centres holding Uyghur Muslims against their will in Xinjiang. In Xinjiang. These cameras are also used by Police Scotland. Just last week, the UK Biometrics Commissioner Fraser Sampson spoke of us having created a network of dependencies on Chinese surveillance technology without sufficient regard to risk. He also likened Hike Vision in particular um, as digital asbestos. Presiding officer, these cameras are not only a threat to our privacy and our security, but their continued use across Scotland flies in the face of the liberal principles and human rights that we as a nation claim to champion. I have raised the alarm on this numerous times, but little action has been taken. Indeed, Scottish Liberal Democrats have led the way in identifying the threat that these devices pose. And whilst Liberal Democrat councillors in Edinburgh in particular have been successful in their calls to have Hike Vision cameras removed from the capital from local government estate. 
It's time then that the Scottish Government showed some leadership here too. They should echo the warnings of experts and issue an alert advising local authorities and public bodies against the use of such surveillance equipment, and particularly equipment manufactured by companies linked to the Chinese state and in the orbit of its intelligence legislation. That would be a positive step forward, but Chinese state surveillance runs worryingly deeper than this. Presiding officer, the United Kingdom shares a proud history with the people of Hong Kong, and I led the first debate in this parliament on the plight of the people of Hong Kong. It is why former leader uh, of my party, Paddy Ashdown, was the first to seek and secure British passports for the Hong Kong Chinese. International solidarity for people that we may never meet is a core liberal principle. And we have offered the people of Hong Kong, threatened by the ever-increasing authoritarianism of the Chinese state, safe harbour on our shores. And I'll take an intervention from Daniel Johnson. Daniel Johnson. I'm very grateful to the member for giving way. And I, I, indeed, I think we should all reflect upon the words of the Sino-UK uh, agreement back in 1984. But actually, our, our obligation to Hong Kong people from Scotland runs deeper than that, given this country's deep historical and indeed shameful legacy in the, uh, with regards to the opium wars. And I wonder if you'd agree with me that we have a, a very deep sense of duty and obligation to the people of Hong Kong uh, that runs back uh, many decades and centuries. Oh, it's called Hamilton. I am very grateful to Daniel Johnson for that um, excellent reminder of Britain's historic complicity in the plight of the people of Hong Kong and our duty of care to them. And that is why I'm proud that we have offered them safe harbour in our shores and uh, uh, visas to get here if they need them. But still the reach of Chinese Communist Party intelligence services reaches them even here under the auspices of, again, that intelligence law. And there are even reports of that a secret Chinese police station operating out of a restaurant in Glasgow. And I've had direct discussions with Hong Kongers living here in Edinburgh who say that their public meetings and events are often disrupted by agents of the Ch Chinese state right here in Scotland. Presiding officer, we have a duty to take this seriously and to safe uh, safeguard both Hong Kongers and their allies and supporters from this sort of interference. The danger posed by these covert activities is very real. Unaddressed, these actions threaten to undermine our liberty, our privacy, and even our national security. We are about to commemorate the anniversary of Putin's invasion of Ukraine, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I fear that in the near future, we will look back on this time with an understanding that we were living in the early days of a new Cold War. This is grimly evident also in the Chinese Communist Party's apparent friendship with Vladimir Putin and their aggressive posture towards Taiwan. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has even warned that China could be on the brink of supplying weapons to Russia for use in Ukraine. We must take a stand now. We must firmly be on the side of human rights and international law. As a parliament, as a country, we cannot and must not be complicit in human rights violations nor complacent in the face of such a potential national security threat. That is why the Scottish Government and the UK Government must now undertake an immediate comprehensive investigation into the reach of Chinese surveillance in Scotland. And finally, presiding officer, there may be some who think that this is alarmist or believe that the, the, that sort of surveillance I'm describing is benign. But I ask them to consider the situation. Would it be the case that companies such as Hike Vision and TikTok were instead run by the Kremlin, or if Russian operatives were operating unchecked in our largest cities? 2022 has taught us anything. It is that we must not take for granted the peace, stability, and security that we've been so fortunate to enjoy for the better part of a century. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Cole Hamilton. Uh, we now move to the open debate. I call first Audrey Nicholl to be followed by Jeremy Ball for around four minutes. Ms Nicholl. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'd very much like to thank Alex Cole Hamilton for, for bringing this motion forward. It offers us a real opportunity to debate an issue that, in my view, we should be deba debating a lot more, and that's our national security. So in my contribution today, I want to reflect on what this incident means for us all going about our daily lives enjoying the freedom of living in a democracy. 
There has been much commentary about the Chinese balloon incident in the context of the wider threat posed to the West by China. Last summer, General Mark Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, warned that, and I quote, China is increasing in their aggressiveness in their rhetoric, but also in their activity, noting that China intercepts in the air and sea have increased dramatically over the last five years. And John Bolton, former US security advisor, recently described China as the ex existential threat in the 21st century. Other observers acknowledge surveillance in the 21st century is an expected and everyday part of international relations. A recent commentary piece by Rusi described the event itself as neither new nor particularly notable, albeit this balloon stayed in US airspace for longer than its predecessors. Scotland is a safe place to live, but the United Kingdom is not immune from the threat posed by bad actors. Many of us will recall the tragic terrorist murders of Joe Cox MP and David Amos MP, and the radicalisation and recruitment of British citizens to Daesh during the Syrian conflict. The current threat level for the UK is substantial, meaning an attack is likely. And in his recent annual threat update, the Director General of the Security Service, Ken McCallum, reiterated that no one should be under any illusion about the breadth and variety of threats we face, including Putin's illegal invasion of Ukraine, bringing war to Europe, and an increasingly assertive Chinese Communist Party using overt and covert pressure to bend other countries to its will. He described how the Chinese authorities use all means at their disposal to monitor and intimidate the Chinese diaspora for, for, from forcibly repatriating Chinese nationals to harassment and assault. And recent media coverage has focused on so-called overseas Chinese police stations, including one reported uh, in Glasgow, a, a matter that Ross Greer raised with the First Minister late last year. And, and I note the comments uh, made by Mr Cole Hamilton in relation to his in interaction uh, with local students on their experiences. The reach of the Chinese state also extends to using organisations, including the United Front Work Department, to apply pressure to anyone challenging the regime's core interests, whether that's on democracy or human rights abuses. According to the Director General, we can expect it to increase further as President Xi consolidates power on an indefinite basis. I welcome the establishment of the UK Government Defending Democracy Task Force that will focus on protecting the democratic integrity of the UK from threats from foreign interference, including that of China. And I would ask the Minister what update she may be able to provide on the task force engagement with the Scottish Government on the work that they are taking forward. In the meantime, presiding officer, I value and cherish that we live in a nation where police officers are not routinely armed, where we can walk around our community safely and speak freely on the things that matter to us. We will not and we must not be complacent, maintaining our focus on China's growing sphere of influence in a volatile international environment while defending our freedom and democracy. So I'd like to again thank Alex Cole Hamilton for bringing this important motion forward today for debate. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms Nicholl. I now call Jeremy Balfour to be followed by Daniel Johnson in around four minutes, Mr Balfour. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I also want to thank my friend Alex Cole Hamilton for bringing forward this important debate this afternoon. And I would also like to thank the Committee for Freedom in Hong Kong Foundation for their briefing uh, provided. I have worked closely with the committee over the past year to ensure that those who have come to Scotland from Hong Kong are safe and free to live their lives without fear of persecution. I look forward to forward to the Commissioner's initiative forward and I would encourage colleagues from across the Chamber to join the efforts. Deputy President Officer, I know that I won't be alone in the Chamber when I say that I have found the events in North America over the last couple of weeks very disturbing. 
A nation's sovereignty being so blatantly challenged is extremely worrying. And there are worrying signs at home as well as abroad. And I want to refer to three areas this afternoon that cause me concern. Firstly, Taiwan. Secondly, illegal police stations. And thirdly, the infiltration of churches in Scotland. I hope across this chamber we all will stand with Taiwan in regard to its independence. I, I'm proud to be a member of the cross-party cross group on Taiwan, having visited that country a few years ago. And I would be interested whether the Minister, either in her summing up or perhaps she could write to me um, after this, to let me know what engagement the Scottish Government has had with Taiwan over the last number of months. As uh, both uh, members have already uh, alluded to, um, I think we are all shocked to hear of the existence of a secret Chinese police station in Glasgow last year. A report from Civil Liberties Group Safeguard Defenders goes into detail about the working of these stations that are found around the world. They found that local Chinese residents are used to do the bidding of the Chinese police. This has caused a great deal of stress to Hong Kongers who live in Glasgow after fleeing their home for fear of persecution. I've spoken to people who say they don't feel safe walking the streets in case they are accosted by someone representing the regime they have fled from. Deputy President Officer, I hope this whole parliament can commit to ensure that no foreign nation is unlawfully policing in Scotland and doing everything in our power to make those who have chosen to settle in Scotland feel welcome and safe. Finally, I want to refer to something that I myself have a specialist interest in, the apparent infiltration of CCP propaganda in some churches in Chinese communities. On one occasion, a Hong Konger expressed his pro-democracy view in church. This immediately led to a heated debate between other pro-CCP churchgoers and him. In the sermon the priest gave a few days after the incident, he said the following, Hong Kongers should be grateful for what China has done for them and should not be rebellious. It is great to be Chinese. We should be proud of it. Even we here in Scotland, we will always be Chinese and should support the country's policies. I want to call all church leaders across Scotland to honour their positions, forgoing political allegiances in church and simply point people to Jesus rather than any earthly authority. Presiding officer, we must stand strong against foreign operations in our country. I hope that this parliament can come together and agree to stand against tyranny for those in our country that are fleeing persecution. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Balfour. And I call Daniel Johnson again around four minutes. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I begin too by thanking Alex Cole Hamilton? I think it's really important that we use the events of recent weeks and months in terms of the very obvious and explicit uh, use of uh, Chinese state uh, surveillance apparatus over North America to reflect about what that means and the actions we should take. And because some of those will be very much geopolitical, but some of them are practical and immediate. And that's really what I want to talk about, because in fact, as uh, Alex Cole Hamilton was speaking, I was just realising that I had been advised to install a hike vision camera in my constituency office. And I didn't take that up because I thought the quote was too high. But in retrospect, I'm quite pleased that I did it. But I'd also like to thank Jeremy Balfour for organising the meeting that, was, uh, that took place in this parliament with Hong Kong refugees. And I was really struck by their experiences. But also, I think that we're in danger of forgetting the uh, events that took place just a matter of a couple of years ago in terms of the pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong, which is the reason that we're seeing this influx of people seeking refuge in this country from Hong Kong. The events of COVID and subsequently the Ukraine, I think, have overshadowed the fact that, that, that people in Hong Kong have been persecuted uh, by the Chinese authorities. They were protesting against an extradition law that would have seen uh, people uh, from Hong Kong extradited for trial in mainland China in direct contravention 
of the Sino Ang Anglo Sino uh, Agreement in 1984, which, Article 13 of which states explicitly that the rights of civil liberty and freedom of speech would be upheld uh, in Hong Kong in the future. That resulted in 10,000 arrests of protesters. And there are now 1,200 political prisoners. That's according to the White House, uh, which they announced uh, in, in 26th of January as they extended the ability of people to seek refuge in the US. 1,200 political prisoners. Now, let's just understand the scale of that, because in 2019, there were less than 8,000 prisoners in totality in Hong Kong's jails. That meaning more than 10% of Hong Kong's jails are political prisoners. I find that statistic horrific. And I think we must uh, seek to fulfil our duties and obligations, both through those agreements in 1984, but actually our more historic ones that I alluded to in my intervention with Alex Cole Hamilton, because we have a, a real sense of obligation and duty. Our role as a nation, Scot as Scots in Hong Kong, is not one that we should be proud of, and one that I don't think enough Scots are, uh, uh, are fully aware of. Our role in the opium wars, the unfair treaty port uh, uh, treaties, is one of shame. And therefore, I think we have a deep sense of duty in this country to ensure that we welcome people from Hong Kong uh, in, in reflection of that. But I think the real thing that I took away from the meeting uh, that Jeremy Balfour organised was just how scared people were. People were scared to speak in open forum at that meeting. They were only prepared to actually speak on a one-to-one -one basis of their experience because they weren't sure who they were speaking to and who else was in the room. In this building, they were scared to speak their minds, speak their truth in this building. And that really struck me as something that's quite profound. Uh, and, they, and when they did speak privately, they, they spoke of stories about being followed and watched, approached and questioned by people that are acting on behalf of the Chinese state, and also people who were, had academic uh, positions, uh, institutions in this country. So I think there's three things I would draw from this. First of all, I think we have a role as MSPs to ensure that people do feel safe, that they can approach us, and that they will be treated with integrity, but also uh, uh, with confidentiality when they do so. And I think that's a role that we should take. Yeah. Alex Cole Hamilton. I'm very grateful. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt Daniel in his uh, three points that he's raising because they're excellent points and they're very important. Would you agree with me, though, that there are also Chinese citizens living here in Scotland who, for whom the Chinese state and the Chinese Communist Party does not speak and who share our revulsion and our concern about those, uh, the outreach and the efforts to surveil uh, peaceful activities, particularly of the Hong Kong Chinese here in Edinburgh? Daniel Johnson. I think that's a hugely important point, that, that China, being such a huge country will have a diversity of views. And I think anyone who thinks that the Chinese state acts and speaks for all Chinese people is uh, severely mistaken. And we should defend those that maybe hold differing views to those of the Chinese state, whether be they Chinese or otherwise. And I thank Alex Will Hamilton for saying that all three of my points were excellent, given that I'd only stated one of them. Uh, but let me continue with the other two. I think, secondly, I think we do need to recognise the role that our institutions may have in facilitating those. I think we should note that Australia and Canada recently reviewed their academic relationships, particularly with the Confucius Institutes. Now, I think there's welcome things to be had from those relationships, but I think we do need to review them, and that is something that we can do here in Scotland. And finally, I think we need to reflect on the role that other countries uh, and actions other countries may be taking. Uh, Iran, um, it was di di uh, disclosed by MI5 Director General, has uh, made 10 attempts to either kidnap or kill its own citizens within the UK. And the Turkish embassy in March last year was uh, uh, found to have uh, been uh, carrying out surveillance on uh, its citizens here in the UK. I think, above all else, we must sure ensure that Scotland is a safe haven for people who are seeking refuge from despotic and repressive regimes, be that China or anywhere else in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Johnson. I now invite Eleanor Whittam to respond to the debate minister for around seven minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I too am grateful to Alex Cole Hamilton for providing the Parliament with the opportunity to debate such an important and wide-reaching topic. I'm only absolutely you know, devastated that there's not more people here to talk about such a topic. As will be appreciated by this Parliament, national security and data protection are matters which are reserved. We are therefore constrained in laws that we can make in these matters. However, recent activities as highlighted in today's motion are timely reminders of the many continued threats that are faced. These developments are further signs of how the global threat picture is changing, as has been mentioned. Ensuring the security of Scotland and the rest of the UK and its data is a priority for both the Scottish and the UK governments. 
As has been raised today, whilst matters are reserved, the impacts can be felt across the devolved sectors in Scotland. Ministers take security matters extremely seriously, and the Scottish Government keeps all policies under review. And you will be aware, as has been mentioned today already, that Police Scotland are currently inquiring into reports of an undeclared Chinese police station in Glasgow. And it is um, you know, quite upsetting to hear about the experiences that people have had um, that are been reported to the parliamentarians. But as this is an operational matter for Police Scotland, it would not be appropriate for me to comment further today. In addition, we expect our institutions and businesses to be fully aware of the risks of any international engagement, do due proper diligence and take steps to protect their assets and people. And I hope today I'll be able to provide assurance on these matters. Yep. Daniel Johnson. I'm very grateful uh, to the Minister for Giving Away. Obviously, one of the most uh, key ways that we have explicit relationship with China and Scotland is through our academic institutions. And while I think that we wouldn't want to see this treated in a binary way, does she think there's a need to review our academic links and institutional links uh, through academia with China? Minister. I think it's always important that we do look to other countries around the world as to where they've done such reviews. I do think that we have such close relationships in terms of you know, um, our in educational institutions here um, and with China, and I think that um, a review of that um, is something that is not going to be off the table. I think it's something that we have to, to bear in mind. Um, turning first to the matters that recently took place in the United States, as Alex Cole Hamilton will be aware of the US assessment points to a deliberate violation of their sovereign territory and airspace. And we stand full square behind the decisive, decisive action taken by the the United States and are following the investigation into this incident closely. The UK government has indicated it will conduct a security review to assess the dangers posed by the balloons and we support their review to protect um, UK airspace from these types of intrusions. The review will be used to help decide whether any changes need to be made to the surveillance of British airspace and the Scottish government stands ready to engage in the process where appropriate. Um, and the Parliament will be aware of the efforts by the Chinese central government to strengthen its security legislation, as referred to in today's motion. According to that legislation, everyone is responsible for state security, which is in line with China's state security legal structure as a whole. The legislation includes articles that could compel businesses registered in China, including those operating overseas or have operations in China, to hand over information to Chinese intelligence agencies. This clearly, as has been mentioned, has data protection and security, uh, data security implications in Scotland as it does globally. Data protection is a matter reserved um, and the UK government will continue to monitor the threats that our data, um, to our data and will not hesitate to take further action if necessary to protect our national security. Organisations are expected to comply fully with UK privacy laws. Yep. Alice Cole Hamilton. I'm very grateful uh, to the Minister for taking uh, my intervention. And I understand entirely the landscape of uh, reserved and devolved um, competences in this very complex issue. Um, that's why I've sought to call on the government really just to, to conduct an audit, uh, if you like, as to the reach and influence of Chinese surveillance possible potential within our daily life here in Scotland, and to make local authorities and public bodies like Police Scotland, who are still using high vision surveillance cameras, aware of the potential dangers and data breaches that could uh, come as a result of so doing. Minister, and I can give you the time back. Thanks very much for that. Yep, that's absolutely something that I'm going to come on to just in a, a little moment. Um, as highlighted in today's debate, the UK Biometrics and Surveillance Commissioner's recent report provides an insight into the extent of the potential reach of the national intelligence law of the People's Republic of China. And in response, the UK government announced that companies subject to, to this legislation should not be able to supply surveillance um, systems to sensitive UK government sites. I repeat the assurance previously given through answers to Alex Cole Hamilton and um, recent parliamentary questions. The Scottish Government takes seriously the threats that this poses and is undertaking action within its powers to expose these issues. The Scottish Government is in the process of a multi-year improvement pro programme which commenced in 2018 and all existing CCTV um, kit and equipment is being replaced with a new integrated system and that will have data protection and security cle cleanly at the forefront of our minds. And also we are aware that the CCTV uh, systems in local authorities and Police Scotland include equipment supplied by Chinese owned companies. Um, the National Strategy for Public Space CCTV in Scotland, which was published in March 2011, is not quite up to date yet in terms of the, the um, existence of the world that we live in today um, and the, the digital asbestos, as you, you put it before, um, that, that is in front of us. Um, so we must look to 
in proving that in the future, um, and I will keep um, Parliament up to date on how we do that. The Scottish Government continues to keep in close contact with the UK Government on developments in response to the Foreign Affairs Committee recent recommendations, and we will act accordingly, including consulting with Police Scotland and local authorities on what measures they might take in response to these steps. Next week does mark the start of Cyber Scotland Week, which we will have a series of events to help people make people and organisations more cyber aware and resilient. And I would encourage everyone in the Chamber um, to consider attending these events and telling your constituents about the, the week and um, visit the cyberscotland.com portal and share that on your social media channels. Um, and that will give people a little bit of a chance to pause and think about what apps they might have on their own um, phones um, and computers. Both the NCS and, the, and cyberscotland.com websites are useful sources of information, advice and guidance. And the NCS CS also have social media guidance which covers most major platforms, including advice on digital footprints and privacy um, settings. I want to make a um, comment just before I close with regards to human rights um, and, and China. We've heard quite a lot today round about that. The Scottish Government's China policy supports the economic, cultural, education and social relationships with the people of China in keeping with the values of Scotland. And we can't forget that the majority of people in China do want to foster good relations around the world. This means working constructively on global priorities such as tackling climate change and biodiversity loss, as well as challenging China in areas of grave concern such as human rights. And I do echo concerns um, that we've heard around the, the Chamber. We have particular concerns regarding the situation in Xinjiang. And if we think about um, those other situations that we need to raise, people who are being persecuted for their religious um, beliefs in, in China and perhaps as well um, keeping at the forefront of our mind the situation in Taiwan and as well with the situation um, in Hong Kong. Um, we are clear-eyed about our international engagement, including with China. And as I've previously stated, we expect our institutions and businesses to understand and manage the reputational, ethical and security risks associated with our international partnerships. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Minister. That concludes the debate, and I suspend this meeting of Parliament until two o'clock.